Hi folks, welcome back episode number four. Let's get started. We uh, gotta take this down to widths. I used my panel gauge. There's my gauge line on there. I get rid of bulk of it with the scrub plane. Do the rest of this. Wipe this one way. Do the rest of this with my uh, four plane on the shooting board. Remember, you gotta balance should make another shooting board a little bit longer just so that I'm not having to balance it in midair in order to start this. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of spot work on here. I've got a fat 16th to go here and I'm down to maybe a bare 16th up here so I'm gonna work this in different areas before I start going full length. I'm gonna advance the blade out to a little heavier cut, speed this up. I have a tendency to uh, push directly opposite of the blade with my left hand. I'm just trying to get the edge parallel to that gauge line. It's getting pretty close. Okay. Now, it seems to be a little heavier here than it is up there, so I'm going to go part way and then just pull the plane away so that I don't leave a shaving there. And it end off fairly smooth. And now I'm going to retract the blade so I can sneak up on that. A little bit more. Remember, I'm only using the shooting board to keep the board square to the sole of the plane. I'm relying on the sole of the plane to do the actual straightening or to make sure that it comes out straight. Okay, I'm almost done here, but I still have material here. So again, I'm not going to take a full length cut. I'll just go as far as I dare and then pull the plane off. Now I can go full length. Okay, that's really close. There's a little uh, feather edge that you can see it right here. You see that frick that the marking gauge knife leaves? And you can often use that just as a gauge to determine where you are. And that looked to be pretty much the same all the way along. So take one more pass. Okay. All right. One, two, three, four, should have been five. Now we're going to do the final surface, which is going to be to thickness. And if I remember correctly, we're going to take those down to three eighths of an inch. So I'll take my marking gauge. Rick, you want to come in close on this? I'm going to set my marking gauge for three eighths of an inch. Can you see that? Yes, I can. Okay, lock it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scribe all the way around and I'm going to reference off of, or got, uh, I'm going to work off of the reference face. So, nice deep line, just makes it easier to see. But this one's going to be a little bit difficult because this is the end that I didn't get to, I didn't get to scribe because I couldn't get my reference faces against the fence. Okay, I'm going to set that there. I may want that setting later. All right, so I've got a good quarter of an inch to remove off of there. Check the grain direction. Looks like I'm going to go this way. I'm going to start off with the scrub plane. Make sure this bench is nice and clean. I don't want anything keeping that from laying perfectly flat. Not too tight. Make sure it lays flat. Now, projection on that. That's quite a bit of material. I'm going to bring that a little bit further. Okay, can you see that? See the projection? Yep. Again, nice straight straight grain lumber, so we should be able to go um, f straight down the board. All right, let's do it. Keep an eye on it. Okay. 
Okay. I get too nervous when I get close having the blade out that far. So I'm going to pull it in. Quick check. See how I'm doing. I'm a little low here. Start in the middle. I always find it easier to look, easier to see the gauge lines on the end grain for some reason. Pull that in a little bit further. All right, there's where we are now. You see that? Yep. Okay. Now I want to get that as close to being flat. Just lessens the amount of work I have to do with the uh, four plane, which is not going to remove stock as fast. Love the way this stuff cuts. All right, I'm going to finish that with. I'm going to finish that with my bench plane. I was using this earlier today, so I actually may need to put a new edge on it. Keep that well lubricated. Blade out fairly heavy at first. So we get rid of those surface imperfections left by the scrub plane. Okay, sixteenth of an inch on this side, thin here, thick here. A little heavy in this corner, a little light in this corner. Just gonna have a quick look. Eyeball that. Okay, I'm gonna protract the blade a little bit. Now because this is going to be my finished surface, I'm going to stop and resharpen this so that I can get that pristine cut that will eliminate any sanding. Don't do it just yet, but forewarning you. Okay. I'm really close down here, but I'm heavy here, so I've got to stay away from this end until I get caught up. Still not going all the way to the end, meaning start all the way back here. That's getting close. Now, take this apart and give it a quick sharpen. We went through that the other day, so I'll just talk you through it real quick. One thing about that pine is that it leaves that pitch on the back of the blade. I don't want it gumming up my stone. Keep them wet. I always bring them back into being flat every time before I sharpen. It really minimizes the maintenance. Set that blade down on the primary. Raise up a few degrees. Three or four. Takes about ten seconds. Put in a bit of practice doing this and in no time you'll be able to uh, freehand just as well as I do. 
Come over here to the fine stone, raise it up a little bit higher than it did on the last one. About 10 seconds to refine that edge. And this is the part that people have a hard time with, at least initially, is transitioning to doing those corners. You gotta do it without stopping so that you don't change your angle. There, it's done. The ruler trick. Thank you, David Charlesworth. A little extra time there just because there was still some pitch left on the back of that blade. There, perfect. Okay. Put that uh, back iron on. Sixteenth of an inch away from the edge is close enough. I'm going to get my screwdriver to do this. Keep the face of that frog nice and clean. You don't want any debris preventing that blade from seating on there very positively. Just enough pressure to prevent the blade from shifting while you're using it. But yet it still allows you to make adjustments. Get that blade parallel to the sole and retract it. Now this is how I would typically do it the other day when we were doing it. We were starting with a fairly rough surface. But when I've got a semi-finished surface, with the blade fully retracted, I'll start planing. And then while I'm planing, I'm going to start advancing the blade by spinning the adjuster knob in a clockwise rotation as I look at it. And I'll watch to see where the first bit of shaving comes out to determine whether or not the blade truly is parallel to the sole. Now, it appears I'm a little bit heavy on one side. So I'm going to skew the blade by pushing the lateral adjustment lever toward that high side. Just a little bit. The nice thing about having a bearing on the end of that lateral adjustment lever, it makes this adjustment nice and smooth and precise. The uh, less expensive style planes, it's just metal grinding on metal and it makes that procedure not quite as precise. Okay, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I'm almost finished thickness down here and I'm still heavy on this end. So if I'm not careful, I'm going to be in trouble. I need a little more. Now I'll watch for that, that little feathered edge. It's a great indicator of telling you when you're almost there. And I want this to be precise. I want to be within four or five thou. Meaning I want the thickness to be almost or as close as possible. You'll see why when we start cutting the dovetails on this, why that's important. Okay. Try a full length pass. We're still heavy down here. for that feather. Okay. Retract that blade a little bit more. And now go for that final finishing pass. I may end up having to run the plane over these boards one more time just before we assemble just to get rid of any fingerprints or pencil marks that my might have. But I want it to be as close to being finished as possible before I take it out of this setup. Okay, that little wire edge is still on down here. It 
is on one side, not on the other. Can you see that, Frick? Can you pick up on that little wire edge? Come around. It's going on that side. It's still right there. Just this one corner. There. All right. That's good. Now I'm going to cross cut these pieces. And to do that, I'm going to use my bench hook and my cross cut saw. Okay, this is the uh, that's the one that has the finished end. Now, length was twelve. It was twelve inches. Square line on there. Now I want to perfect that on the shooting board. So I'll just get really close. I know I've got, uh, I'm going to verify that right now, but I know I've got at least, yeah, I've got a half an inch extra here, so I'll have to cut some more off of there. Now, in using, in using the, uh, the bench hook, it's got a cleat on the front, so it resists effort pushing this way, and we're using western style saws. Squeeze the two pieces together, so I'm keeping it tight to the fence. Use my finger as a guide to get that cut started. And depending on how good you are with the saw and how good your saw cuts, determines how close to that line you can, you can trust yourself to get. Um, the saw that I've got has a real narrow set. So, minimal tear out. Can't say too much about it because I make them. That would sound a little bit self-serving, but it does cut beautifully. So there's the back side. See, next to nothing when it comes to tear out. I'll, sh I'll clean that up a couple of times on the shooting board and that'll be perfect. I'll use that as my finished edge on this one. Actually, I've got a, well, no, that's, I can trust that. That's close enough to being square. I'll go ahead and mark this one just a little bit long. Leave an extra sixteenth or so. And we'll trim that off. I like to start and saw on a bit of an angle because I'm starting here and then as I saw, I can pivot the saw from where from this kerf and I can just track right along that line until I get the curve started on the top and then you want to make sure you're holding your saw plumb so that you don't undercut and end up going below on the opposite side there, piece of cake Now we want to screw those up. I'll do that finish one first. I'll use it as a gauge for the other one. Plane's nice and sharp. All right, first thing we're going to do is uh, cut our little chamfer to prevent tearing out when we cross the end grain. I'll just work to that gauge line that I just made the mark I just put on there. If that was a real precise measurement, meaning I was fitting something, I would have marked that line with that line of that dimension with a knife, not a pencil. Much more precise. But for this, pencil line was certainly close enough. 
And it's just a matter of planing away until we see that little chamfer disappear. Stop and check it. I can just see that where the chamfer stopped, about an eighth of an inch this side. Another pass, maybe two. That looks good. Okay, perfect. Now I'll go ahead and get one of these ends ready. I want to get rid of the little bit of raggedness that came off of the saw. It's not a lot, but I don't want any of it. Okay. Now we'll line these two up. And I'll grab a sharp chisel. Flush these up on one end. I use a chisel because it, it enables me to, there's no bevel on one side, so I can come in there and I'll get this. Lay the chisel right up against the end of the board, hold it flush to it, and then just leave a little mark. And now I know when I plane to that mark that I've got a precise dimension. Cut my little chamfer until I come right to that line. I'll hold that still this time. Okay, so there's my little line that I made with the, with the chisel. Okay, make sure there's no debris up against the fence. And just watch for that chamfer to disappear. So there are my two side pieces. Those are done. Now we'll go ahead and start that process over again, hopefully a little faster this time. And we'll go ahead and take care of the ends. Once we've got that done, we'll cut these and then we'll start, uh, we'll cut the grooves, we'll get the dovetail laid out and the fun begins. We still got another five minutes guys? Yep. I can get at this? Yep. Okay. Short piece like this, I should be a whole lot quicker than I was on the last one. Let's see if that'll lay flat. Not on that side, it doesn't. Okay, lucky again. Um, how much is, what's the dimension on this? This is going to be 5 8 So I'll give myself a little bit of a rough mark as to where or how much material I'm going to remove. This is a full inch. And 5 eighths means 5 sixteenths on either side of center. So we're not taking a whole lot off of those surfaces. Check the grain direction. Move my bench dog over. Of course that spacing never works out the way I want. Or if it does, it does it so rarely I don't remember it. I need a little piece of wood. I'll take two of these. Okay, make sure that's laying flat. Okay, there's the there's the setting on the blade. Got that? Yep. Smoother, not smoother, but the bench plane. A little heavier cut. Seems almost crazy to put winding sticks on that, but 
got to be flat. Getting sticky. Get the pressure off. High in these corners. Once I've done that, I just go back in and make full length passes. Clean that surface up again. Especially something as small as this, if I can perfect it now, put the winding sticks on, have it just right, be done with it. So close, just to hide just a hair on these, this corner, this corner. That might do it. All right, one final perfecting pass. Check that. Jake didn't want to go through that whole process again. I'm glad that one was quick. Okay, grab my shooting board. Straighten one edge. Right, that's good. This is the same length as that. I'm change that setting. If I kept it the same, that'll save me a few minutes. Where's my? It looks like it's the same. Three and a half. Yeah. So I'll go ahead. I'm gonna actually put this on the other side because I'm gonna lay that reference face against. Well, why did I do that? So do it right. It'll help. Still enough, a lot of extra material. That's three and a half. Okay. That, I've got about a quarter of an inch to get rid of, so I'll move that pretty quick with the scrub plane. Keep my plane as parallel to that marking gauge line as possible. It's looking real close. See that little feather coming off. Yeah. Okay, let me square up one end anyway. How are we doing for time, guys? 30 seconds. It's almost over. All right, that one's squared up. Now, this thickness is going to be, on these ends, we're going 5 eighths. So, I'll set my marking gauge for 5 eighths, and then we'll wrap it up until our next session. Scribe referencing off of the inside face, and if you just to make sure you're following along with me, I'll, I'll mark, label that as my reference side. It's always I find it always easier to control a marking gauge pulling it as opposed to pushing it. And I really like the wheel type because when you get right to that end, you can simply just roll the last little bit. It gives you lots of control. Okay. So next time we'll take that down to thickness, cut it, and uh, and we'll be cutting our dovetails. So we'll see you back here in our next session.